Hey guys, welcome back. This is Little Fear Fear here, and today we are here for another restoration. This time it is of a Tyco Mantua Pacific locomotive. I cannot remember if this locomotive actually runs or if there's something wrong on the inside. Now let's get to test it out. Starting off in forwards. A little bit of a churn. Now reverse. The tender came up a little bit, but this locomotive does seem to be running. But now let's go ahead and open up this locomotive. All right, now the first thing we're going to do is separate the tender from the locomotive. I'm gonna grab this washer, stick it in a little box. This washer actually goes to the front truck. I saw it laying on the track before I started the video, so I just left it up there for now. To disconnect the two, there's a simple permanent drawbar. I'm going to unscrew both halves, although you don't have to. This drawbar luckily is in good condition for it being of a compressed paper or wood. I'll just set the tender off to the side. We'll go ahead and clean that off camera. Now onto the locomotive. Now our little bits here. Put them in a safe place. First things first, I'm going to open up the locomotive here. There's a screw in the top of the chimney or smokestack, however you want to refer to it as. There should be a screw here. There should be another one here, but it seems to be missing. There, the two are separated. I will clean the body off camera. But now we have the motor and everything situated in front of us here. It's pretty easy just to see. It's an open frame, five pole motor. All you have to do is remove this top plate to get to the commutator. The previous owner seems to have put a little bit of lubricant on this central worm gear, but I'll put quite a bit more on probably. You can detach the front pilot here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can clean that. First, I will take off the leading truck. Make sure to keep the spring that goes with it. And I will also remove the trailing truck. The locomotive does not pick up power in any sort of way from these trucks, so you don't have to worry about cleaning the wheels on them inherently. The cylinders also came off. With this locomotive, that's not as big of an issue since it doesn't have all of its other linkages in place. I'm going to clean up some of this area, make sure it's all organized. I actually already have one of these locomotives and you can see this has all the proper linkages on it and this would be a lot harder to get back in place. So I wouldn't be as hesitant to take that all off. This one I will keep. I might actually sell this one online so if any of you guys are interested, please let me know. I do have an email link on my channel page if you guys want to contact me. Now we're going to get access to the commutator. I'm going to do that by moving the brushes out of the way. Both brushes. Okay. 
bar out. This wire is off. Now we can get to the commutator. You can see it is very dirty on the inside there. What I'm going to do now is take an eraser and scrub at the inside there by simply taking it in, spinning the motor. You can use a thick eraser. Sometimes I'll just use one from a pencil, an old pencil. Just scrub at it for a little while. And you can see it's a little bit better already. You can see where it's more black, where I've scraped a little bit more. Going to scrape some more off camera. Before I finish scraping, you want to make sure and clean out the gaps in the commutator. Just taking a toothpick here, something that is softer than the brass or copper that you are digging into, just to make sure that there are no short circuits in any sort of way. And you want to make sure that it's a softer material so that you don't scratch this commutator. That can cause issues with your brushes and they can slowly wear down a lot faster. Now it is time to reattach the brushes. Just want to stick them up and under. Move this little pin piece back in place. There we go. See how it's set. And there's that little pin pushing the brush down. Now I'm gonna do the other one off camera here. Now that we have both of those brushes back on locomotive, it's time to clean these wheels up. For this, I'm going to be taking a Pico track bright and scrubbing against the tires of the wheels. I'm going to make sure to put all the drive rods out of the way. That's something very similar to the effect of this. And then of course, spinning the motor just a little bit to clean a new section. So I'll go ahead and do this off camera. All right, now these wheels were pretty clean to begin with, but we just scrubbed them a little bit more. And I'm just going to take a cotton swab, try to collect any more dust gathered around here. Wipe down the rods too. Before we add any lubricant to them. Now we're going to lubricate the worm gear. Just going to take it on a toothpick, try to get it into these little grooves. Wipe off the little amount put on that wheel. This will all slowly work its way in. It'll also get better when the locomotive is up and running again. Now let's lubricate all of these axles and joints in the linkage. Just do the same on the other side. Spinning around a little bit more. The grease I used is some Labelle 102. Forgot to mention that. There we go. Seems to be eased in a little bit. Now we are going to put this pilot piece back on. screws in pretty easily. Make sure I have it straightened before I tighten it all the way. There we go. Now let's add the trailing wheels. Just 
to do that, we're just going to take the spring and rest it in the little notch here. Can be a little difficult to put in place. Seems to be magnetized somehow. There we go. Now let's lower in the rest of it. Just making sure the spring is still in place before I finish screwing it back in. Okay, that spring is in place. So I'll flip it back all over. This little wire piece came undone, but we can put that back on pretty easily. For that, I want to stick the cylinders and put that back in. It interlocks in two places. The black going in the lower part and the metal going in the upper part. This can be very difficult and you want to have a lot of patience while you're doing this. Because things tend to come undone. After a bit more wiggling, I got it back in. I'm going to take this wire. Try to wrap it around the same side it was on earlier. Try to add a little bit of solder to it, hold it down. While the soldering iron is heating up, I'm going to reattach the front truck here. Trying to hold these cylinders in place with my other hand. There we go. Now I'm going to use the screwdriver to finish it. There we go. And I will also lubricate the axles with some more Lebel 102. There we go. to slide this off to the side since the iron is still heating up but now I'm going to reattach the trucks to the bottom of the tender I just took them off when I went to clean it this locomotive was never lettered so it's very customizable now the trucks actually should go this way. I have them upside down so their screws stay in. I did clean up the wheels just a little bit back here, but they didn't seem that bad. Now we'll also add some lubricant to these. You can obviously wear these ones down and get the oil spread around a lot easier. Now the tender is ready to be reattached. 
I'm gonna go check on the iron now. All right, now I couldn't get a good angle with the camera in the way for the soldering, so I wanted to play it better safe than sorry, and so I just did it off camera here. You can see the little dollop I've added, and now the wire is firmly in place. Now it's time to re-add the top of the locomotive. You can see, I tried to remove the dirt as best as I could. There are some nicks in the paint that came when I got this locomotive. Just gonna set it down slowly. Make sure the wire goes out the back. Shut these little handrails in. I did find a screw that can fill the place of the missing screw. It's another Tyco screw, so they should be perfectly compatible. There we go. Both the handles are snapped in. Flip the little over. Well, that'll be something to fix. Well, there was a screw that was not big enough, apparently. On the underside, when I went to flip the locomotive, it just came simply out. I'm going to refit the body, though. Anyway, now first. Driver slightly magnetized, that doesn't help. There we go, let's grab the other one. The first one I screwed in was the replacement. Now here's the regular one. They're both in. Now let's grab the one that goes through the smokestack. Line that up. There you go, that one's in. Now before we put the tender and locomotive together, let's fix whatever issue arose down here. I want to look at my intact Pacific locomotive, and I could not see where this washer was used. Yeah, the washer's too big to fit. The screw fell straight through. All right, now let's try it again. It seems I found a worthy substitute. This is a lot larger screw head on the screw. But now let's connect these two parts back together. Open up my little case here, draw bar. Sort of decided to roll a little bit further. double checking to see which way it goes because it has a slight bend upwards. Flip the tender now. Got to make sure to include the wire when you put everything back together. Gonna be a little tricky. There we go. Make sure both of those are properly tightened. 
And now let's go ahead and test this locomotive. All right, now let's test the performance of this locomotive. Starting off in forwards. There we go. Seems to be pretty speedy. It's a lot quieter. Might in fact actually be performing better than the other Pacific that I restored, you know, almost a year ago now. I try to improve every time I restore a locomotive and I already knew how to open up this locomotive to begin with. This locomotive is definitely not really geared for freight service. But let's see how slow it can start. Turning up slowly. So it kind of does just start abruptly. Although this locomotive is pretty old, so it's decent performance for how old it is. And now that we've got it all cleaned up outside and on the inside. All right, now I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching, make it towards the end of the video. In this video, we cleaned up the outside of this locomotive, lubricated all of the axles, the running gear, including in the tender. We re-soldered a electrical joint inside and on top of the motor. We cleaned out the commutator and cleaned the gaps inside of there. There was no light to deal with in this locomotive at all, so that was pretty easy to deal with. Next week, we will be working on this Mikado locomotive, very similar in size, just a different wheel arrangement underneath, and you can tell very similar outsides as well. As I stated earlier, this locomotive will be for sale. If you guys want to contact me at my email, post it on my YouTube page or else I might just eventually list this locomotive on eBay and I'll put a link down in the description below. And if this locomotive eventually does sell, I'll also update the description, just letting you guys know. I plan on doing the same for this locomotive after we restore it next week. And I'd like to thank you guys again and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.